viewers, welcome to a new broadcast. The earliest wish of humankind could come true. The search for eternal youth. The elixir of the gods seems to be decoded. My guest, Dr. Tamar Sikra from Budapest, who became known in Germany through the author Jan van Helsing, believes to have cracked the code of eternal youth. Today we will speak about how he has succeeded and what accomplishments he has achieved to date. Welcome, Tamash. Nice to have you here. Before we begin, please tell our viewers something about who you are and your background to get a clear picture about yourself. Well, that's a big question if we talk about clear picture. <laughs> My background is medicine and I'm a medical doctor or I was a medical doctor un until I was doing the profession, but uh, for the last many years I am mostly doing alchemy, philosophy and other interesting things. But the background is medical. Medical. Um, as a medic, please tell us how it came that you start to search for the et eternal life. Well, I started aging. I was 24 and I was horrified that I am aging, and I have seen that <laughs> the medical practice as such, in general, cannot do anything about aging. And it became my pet project at first, and then it became my, my love affair. Because what nobody can do anything about has to be cracked. And this is my basic personality, to take something that is imponderable and get some kind of a solution or at least try to get some kind of a solution. And this is my hobby. This makes me tick. That's, that's about it. This is why I chose uh, longevity first and then immortality and then, then the rest. Mm, which questions or topics have you kept so busy that you are constantly looking for answers in this area? Which questions? Yeah, your own questions. My own questions is where I come from, why I came, who I am, and what are the possibilities that I can achieve? What is the level of freedom that can be lived by myself? What is the technical expertise necessary to produce a living body which does not age, at least does not age as fast as normal humans do. So if I could make a, a, a body, my body, because first that has to be done before it can be done for other people, to live for at least 150, 200, 250 years, then it's something to talk about. And then that technology which has been applied to my own body, to my own consciousness could be given to others. And what has happened in your life that you were not only convinced that a human being can become older than we believe, but that you actually set out the search for the elixir and firmly believe that it exists and works? Well, first there are beautiful books about the elixir, a lot of lore, a lot of legend, a lot of uh, literature, and I was, I was and am an avid reader, and I read a lot, so I read. And then next there was, a, there was a supposition that anything should be possible, technically, philosophically, logically, anything should be possible in this world, so this should be possible as well. And since so many are talking about it and they're... Uh, if you, if you start reading that literature which talks about long life or longevity or immortality you f and, and, and you read them thoroughly, not just the tabloid type of, of information gathering, you, you get to see that there is something to it. There is value in it, there is substance in it, but that substance has to be studied in order to be acquired by one. And this is what I've done. I've seen the the truth in it, I have seen the possibility in it, I have seen the feasibility of it, 
and and since it was the thing that interested me most, I jumped at it like the dog jumps at the bone. Because you talk about that, in ancient texts and traditions, one finds many reports about humans, for example, Methuselah, who became 969 years old, or Noah, who turns 500. What convinced you that these were neither meats or isolated cases? Well, that these are the two which are, two, there are about 15 prominent examples to people living for a long time. But when you read more, you see that there are thousands and thousands of them with, who, who lived a very long time. And then there is the, the, the other part of literature, which again fills half a library, talks about people who are living for thousands of years and they are walking around with us now, and they are here. The only problem is they don't say on every corner that, hey, I am 2,000 years old, because they are used to not talking too much, and people don't really tolerate, our society doesn't really tolerate uh, difference. We have to be the same, and then we are tolerated, otherwise we are feared. So it's here, it's happening, it is evident, but you have to study it in order to to, to see that it is an evident truth that it is possible and it can be done. Just it is not common knowledge how to do it. Why do you think it's um, out of our knowledge? Because nobody knows it. <laughs> Because I mean, people, they don't very, read? Very, uh, most people don't read. The, the most people who talk about things like this, this these kinds of uh, interesting and, and esoteric and, 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 and uh, 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 not usual subjects, they are not well-read people. They are people who like to boast. They are people who like to, 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 to storytell. And they take a pinch from here, a pinch from there, a pinch from there. But they're not serious. So that's how it is. And then... What, what we have is these storytellers. So the general population has a knowledge or has a knowing of this uh, subject as such in a, in, a, in a very superficial tabloid format. Like, for example, when I, talk, when I talk to people, I don't anymore, but when I talk to people before about this subject, the, the general first response of an individual was, I will be again three years old. <laughs> Now how stupid can it get? That is how it is. And, and then you, you, you get to not talk much because there are only select few people with whom you talk about these things. And, and the rest is, 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 is Hollywood pictures. Take a pill and then you transform in two minutes into a goddess and you don't have to see your cosmetician anymore so okay then you went to search how may we visualize this in investigation where do you start what were you looking for or where are you looking for i do not think that google is able to help you no, in this no, no. Case. and there was no google when i started <laughs> there was no google there was no internet what was what, what happens is it took me about 10 years 12 years to understand that the, the answers are not out there. The answers are within me. And then that started an introspective search of knowing myself. And Can you explain this? Yes. When, 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 when I put the questions who I am, where I come from, these are the answers to that, those, those questions that am I capable of that? Am I somebody who is, who, is, uh, uh, who is able to access these, this knowledge. And when you are in these fields, you evidently very soon bump into the, the, the uh, we don't live once phenomenon, the past lives. And then since I was a trained medical doctor and I was trained and I am trained in psychology, I did a lot of regressive hypnosis. So I had lots of people hundreds of people actually, with whom over the 
25 years of my, my psychological uh, practice. I did regressive hypnosis, and, and it, is, it is an absolutely commonplace thing to, to have memories of past lives which are, which are not this life, and it's evidently not this life. But in, in, in some cases, you get, you get so much information that it's impossible to, to simply have it like imagined there and then because that is the main argument when you come up with a story that hey this guy in a regressive hypnosis he was the he was the the uh, uh, chief engineer who who drew the Messerschmitt aircraft that was one thing with the in the medical community in the scientific community when uh, regressive hypnosis was done not by myself but by another colleague and a boy of six years old came up with, with the full plans of the Messerschmitt aircraft, and, and, and everybody was baffled. How was that possible? So there are things like that. There are hap things happen like that, and when things happen like that, and things happen like that a lot, then, then, then one starts to think, like, for example, a, a girl who had anxiety attacks, and I did a regression on her, and she was killed in a, a, a street in, in uh, Frankfurt. And then she said which cemetery she was uh, 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 buried, and how, does, how, she, how her tomb looks, what was the name, etc., etc. So what I did, because I'm curious, I, I took her and her parents and we went to, to Frankfurt. And sure it was, there was the grave, and there was the name, and there was everything. And she had detailed, detailed memories of her past life there. So, and, and everything was like she said. Everything was like she said. Now, you take then 25 years of practical in the field. Mm -hmm. And in this 25 years of practical in the field, you have about, well, multiplied by, let's say, 700 such things. Yeah, you After your... that, you're, you, you, you have no questions. But yeah, sure, if I go down and have a beer with the, with the buddies down the pub, they will have questions. And they say, ah, oh, who believes that? Who believes that? Well, there, there is no question then. If you're in the thematic, so after you have no questions anymore. No questions it's because so clear. The it's, it's is absolutely clear. clear and it cannot be otherwise. We don't live once. That is a fact. Full stop. You die, you go to a place or you don't go to a place. The next thing you see is you're again in, a, in an infant body. Okay, we die and we live again. But our thematic today is not to die well, so quick. No die enemy. <laughs> so in order to, to, to conquer death as such, as the death written nicely over it, you have to know what death <laughs> is. So you have to study death, you have to study rebirth, you have to study aging, and then when you know enough about the whole subject, then you, then you can start uh, looking for solutions. So that is an important thing for the, for the ever-living guys. They know a lot about it. On this search, you came across a hermit in the USA who claimed to be 300 years old. He did not. Around. He did not claim. He did not claim anything. He. I. I. I, I asked question. I mean, it, it's not even me actually. It's Enzo, who is my buddy. He calls me every day. He's a hairdresser in Ontario. Things. Is life, Because this life, was my question. Please yeah. describe how you found him yeah, and how life, it life came is weird. about that he passed a recipe uh, for the tincture over to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. This is, a, this is a, a, a weird story, and there are many weird stories. Boy, my life is full of weird stories. So this, this uh, Enzo, Vincenzo, Mr. Petosa from Ontario, a hairdresser, he called me 15 years ago, 16 years ago, when I was sitting in my pyramid and, and doing my thing. And from then on, every day he calls me. Why? Because he has nobody to talk to. He is very interested in subjects like that, but he's a hairdresser. And he's still a hairdresser, <laughs> and he does nothing. He cannot, he cannot cook a soup. He's a hairdresser. He cannot change a tire on his car. But he's so interested in subjects like that, that he calls me. And since I talk to him, he calls me. And he has one single gift in his life. He can call anybody. He can find anybody anywhere on this planet. 
and he once called the Pope and he was put through. He talks to Dalai Lama. He talks to everybody. He, call, he, he called uh, uh, <laughs> President Bush. He called President Carter. He can call anybody. And this is his thing. Now, he calls me. And we are talking about the, the thing, and I say, well, we are not really getting anywhere with this subject. He says, okay, maybe, maybe I do some searching. And sure enough, in three but days... But the beginning, where do you met the hairdresser? The Why hairdresser, he, no, he called me. I am in Hungary, I am you? in Hungary building my pyramid, and my phone rings. And he found me, okay. uh, it was 2001, he called first. 2001, he called me and he said, hi, I am interested in your work. Uh, okay, and then okay. we started talking. He, I never met the guy, never, never ever seen him. Mm -hmm. But he calls me every day. I talked to him yesterday too. And he calls me every day and he asks, hey, what's going on? That's, that's, that's how it is. And he's interested in, in having a contact with somebody who is doing something because he's doing nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe I am his best friend. He's sure a nice guy to, to, to talk to, sometimes a okay, bit tiresome. Okay, he called you and then he, how it came? He called he me and then years went by and every day he called mm. me. And then one day I told him, hey Enzo, uh, could you do a bit of a searching? It's a sure thing. He's happy to do it because that's what he can do. I say, okay, find me a guy who has the actual red lion, the stone, the stone of immortality. He said, oh, sure, why not? And in three days' time, he found a lady down in Wisconsin, from Ontario, he found a lady in Wisconsin through the phone, who knew the hermit. But the hermit lived in Arizona, down in the, in the wherever, in the forest. And, and the hermit had no phone. And the lady was there uh, meeting the hermit years, 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 years back. But this lady knew an old lady. So... That's what he says to me three days later, that yes, there is a guy who has the stone, and the, this is the, the link to the, uh, to the guy, the hermit. And I said, okay, now how do we get to the hermit? So we don't get to the hermit, the hermit has no phone. I said, okay, then do your magic, do your thing, because that's what he's good at. So two days later, he calls me, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it handled. I took the old lady into buying a burner phone, driving down to Arizona from Wisconsin. And the old lady drove down, <laughs> found the hermit, gave him the phone, said, this is the phone Enzo sent you because he will be calling you. And when the phone rings, pick it up. So the hermit picked it up. <laughs> so if you say life is weird, yes, life is weird. And this is how my life is in, in many respects and aspects. And then Enzo calls the hermit. And the hermit flatly declines giving the stone out, because the stone is not to be given out, it is to be earned, or the stone is supposed to find you, etc., etc., etc. So I tell Enzo, don't be discouraged, do your magic. So three days later, Enzo calls and he says, okay, I talked to the guy again and again and again. So most probably he got distraught and tired, etc. So he said, mm -hmm. okay, we'll give you, I'll give you the stone. <clears throat> so he actually posted the stone to me, I didn't know him, I didn't speak to him, I didn't have any contact with him, but because Enzo did the thing. And then I first tried the stone. And then later Enzo talked to him and talked to him and talked to him, and he talked to him so much that uh, the guy actually <laughs> shared the recipe. So, you see, you do mm -hmm. 20 years of searching and reading and studies, etc. But no, Enzo calls and that's how it goes. So, but Th that it is seems how life so is. simple. Yeah. Now this hermit, then I started emailing with him. Okay. And then I asked him how, my, how old he is. And he said he already answered that question to Enzo. So I call Enzo. You got this question answered. He said, no, I asked him how old he is. And he said, he will never tell me, but he has rebuilt his log cabin three times. And then I asked him, he lives up North Canada, how... How, how many years a log cabin is supposed to be okay. Around he said, well, at, at least 80, 100 years, a log cabin is fine. So three times that, then you multiply then. So the guy is old. And he's a perfectly young. Could thing. you verify the information about his age or did you have to no, rely on I, his I don't statement. care about verification. 
I care about getting the stuff, I care about trying the stuff, and I care about having the, the experience with the stuff. You see, when, when, when we try to... Because you tried before the, the supplements, or what makes you sure that this was true, what he told you? I don't care. The Herman. I don't care. He sent me something which I have eaten, and when I have eaten, I have had a, 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 an experience that... That was enough for me. At that time and even now, it is not about uh, specifically convincing other people. Because other people who are worthy of convincing, they don't need convincing. They do their homework, they read up, and then they come to you, and then they ask respectfully questions, and they get their honest answers, and they are happy with it. But lots of people are not like that. They want proof... Mm. which will, which will uh, give them the proof, I don't know for what, then they are having pickier questions, they are digging into it and how you can prove this, how you can prove that, and that is, that is a, 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 an obnoxious thing, and I don't like that. And so I don't prove anything. I experience things... Because you trust so much in yourself? No, it is me... I'm not doing this for the world. I'm doing it for myself, but for, with those people who ask me nicely, I'm willing to share and I'm happy to share. But it is not about making the world immortal or sharing with the world all the knowledge about immortality. You know why? Because mm -hmm. they're not interested. People, normal people are interested in the, in the tabloid. Have you ever met the hermit? No. And I don't want to, I don't need to. No. I met his product, I did his recipe, I used his product for years, I'm still using his product, and he's producing a perfectly good product. But now I can make it myself, and I, I gave it to many, many people around me, and they also use the product, and without fail it worked. Was Why should I? Was there a special uh, situation after using the product that makes you sure that this is the right recipe? No. Was it like it a makes me sure or? that this is one recipe that works. And when, you, when you're in this field for a longer period of time, you know that there is no, there is no such thing as one single stone. No mm -hmm. such thing as one single solution. What happens is you have to understand the philosophical background. And when you understand the philosophical background of how, how body building or cell building works and how... Uh, Uh, long longevity works as such, what is the mechanics, then you have uh, plenty of solutions at your hands. Because then you, then you know how it works. You can solve it the Hermit way, you can solve it the Chinese way, you can solve it the Tao way, you can solve it the Zen way, you mm -hmm. can solve it the Buddhist way, you can solve it in many ways. And, and, and in India they also have the same kinds of things and they are producing the same effects. But they are the Indian-made Remedies and the the hermit is just one guy with whom we had some kind of communication and we had a uh, stuff exchange. The hermit is he the only one that no. you know no. that you know? No, about I know an Indian one. I know an Nepalese one. I know quite a few guys. This is a tight knit little community with very little talking. Did you met one of these guys? No, never. 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 But we talk. Okay, back in Budapest, you began to produce the product yourself. Yeah. Um, what experience have you made since then? Um, for example, what does it change in oneself and what effects can the consumer expect? Well, I don't know what effect the consumer can expect. What happened to me, I can tell about. Because, you see, when, when what the consumer can expect, then I say what, the, what happened to me, and then the consumer starts expecting the same thing with him. Now it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. I started taking it. When I started taking it, I had multiple sclerosis. I don't know if you know that term. Yeah, that, right, is, yeah. that is a bad illness with the, with the nervous system, and you end up in a wheelchair, then you end up incontinent, then you end up dead. It's a bad way. And yeah. it's a bad way, and it takes years and years. In that stresses your family, etc. When I talk, talked about my wife pulley, pushing me in a wheelchair, well, that was, that was a bad thought. Now, I started taking this product, and the sclerosis multiplex vanished. Pack. 
Now, do I need any more proof? Do I have to ask for the identity and the text number of the guy who made that stuff? No, I respect the guy. And, and that is how the experiences I had. And then from then on, I am a different person. I think differently. My view of the world is totally different. My stamina, my, my attention span, everything increased and everything increased in a better way. So it, it affects also your mind and consciousness? It affects my, the body? No, it affects the mind and consciousness. When the mind and consciousness is affected, it, the, there is, a, there is a, a, a reciprocal effect which heals the body. But it is not a, a, a healing thing. Like you have a, an ulcer, it is not to be taken to heal the ulcer. You take it and you stop worrying and then your ulcer goes. So that's how it is. There is no such thing as, 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 as a physical stuff, a, a, a medicine or a potion or a, 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 some kind of a preparation either from plants or minerals or, or, or living that, that heals. There is no such thing. There is only one mind. I am a mind, and my mind produces this body. And if my mind is messed up, then I will have a messed up body. If my mind is clean and straight and, and orderly, then I will have a healthy body. So the, the, the red lion and any red lion, whichever there are, and I know quite a few by now, they all do the same thing. They do changes in your consciousness. When you change your, uh, there are changes in your consciousness, you start, you know what, you start understanding things that you did not understand before. And then when you start understanding things that you did not understand before, you don't do the same damn mistakes every day. When you don't do the same damn mistakes, you don't get distraught by the evening of again having messed up your day. So you are one happy guy in the evening. Why? Because you did not make those mistakes, because you understood. This is Typical. I understood one day, one nice day, that I should not ask a question from my wife, which, which goes like that, what do you think about it? Because she doesn't think. She feels. Women feel. And when they feel, they have thoughts about how they feel, what they feel. So I always used to ask my whole married life, I mean, until that understanding came that day, what do you think about this, dear? And I never got an answer. And it used to drive me up the wall, under the wallpaper, because it is, it is infuriating never to get a straight answer from one's wife. And then one morning, and this is the, this is the red stuff, this, these are the kinds of, uh, of effects it does. I understood, Jesus, she does not think, she feels. So from that day, I always pose the question, how do you feel about this, dear? And there is always a definite, exact answer. And from the answer, what she feels about this, for example, I uh, interviewed a girl to work for me. And I asked my wife, what do you feel about her? And she said, yeah, you can hire her. But if she would have said, no, don't hire her, I wouldn't have hired her. I wouldn't have asked her why, because she cannot answer that. But she feels like that. And, and these are the understandings about life. Now, for example, then the other understanding. People are always sick. Most people are always sick. Elderly people are always sick. There is an understanding, philosophical understanding, that you, you don't necessarily have to be sick. Now, this is a phrase. For most people, normally, you hear this phrase, you don't necessarily have to be sick. When, one morning again, I always understand things in the morning. I wake up and then I understand things. I don't know how. One morning I understood this phrase. How? I don't know. This is the effect of the red stuff. I don't know, but I understood. I don't necessarily have to be sick. Jesus! And I was sitting there having my coffee and... and and totally uh, amazed at the profundity of the, of the meaning of the phrase. You don't necessarily have to be sick. And I knew it is true. And from that day, I have no sickness. No sickness at all, because I don't 
necessarily have to be sick. Tell me the pill, what do you think? It connects you to something bigger like Akasha? No, chronic, no, or no. Or connects no. you to yourself. To yourself. To yourself. No, no. There is no connection the deep to Akasha. Believing a... that you know every the knowing about everything? No. Uh, understanding that you don't have to know everything. And understanding that your life is as you know it. This is again a philosophical axiom. You see, this is the mm -hmm. thing you have to study philosophy in order to be wise. There is no other way. And so then it's your you life. You have no limits with that. Absolutely no limits. Well, this is the nice part of, of, of our study and chat. You have mm -hmm. no limits. The, the red lion, as such, helps you make those changes in your mind. But when somebody is in your vicinity through with that process, he can teach you. So mm -hmm. then, then you don't necessarily need the red lion. It's of course fun and it's of course nice and, and the, the preparations made from that are very helpful. But it is, it is knowing and it is always just the knowing and your life is as you know it is. So if you know yourself to be a sickly person, you know what? You're a sickly person. If you know yourself to be a lucky guy or girl, you're lucky. If you know yourself to be a, a, an affluent person, then somehow or other you're affluent. And this axiom, it has a big, big explanation, a leng rather lengthy explanation. It says that you are the creative force. Your thoughts are the creative forces. And when the, your thoughts are creative forces, you have to ask the question, what the hell am I thinking about? Because the thoughts have meaning. And if your thoughts are from morning till night that, oh, I hate the pain, then what happens with you is you are a pain hater all day because that is what you're thinking. Or you hate your work. Those people who think that they hate their work are hating their works. Why? Because they think that they hate their work. They create the hate of their work. Mm -hmm. And of course they are cowards and they can't change their work because they say, oh, what will happen to my credit at the bank? What will happen with my car credit? What will happen with my wife? What will happen with this? And they rot in their lives. Why? Because they don't know this axiom. And you have to change your thoughts, thought control. Learn to control your thoughts and know that they are the most important thing there can be in life. What you think. This is the one single most important question when you look at yourself, when you do introspection, when you do any kind of self-assessment. What the hell am I thinking? And when you ask yourself a lot that and Time goes by, a year, two years, three years, you get used to introspection and you get used to sorting your thoughts, then you get good with it. And you know what? Your life changes to the better. Why? Because your thoughts create your life. Some viewers would say, okay, Tamash, he has a long history about this thematic. I'm new in. Um, what successes have your customers made with it? And can you give us a few testimonials? No, and I don't want to. Why? My customers have their privacy. But this is important also for oh, the viewers. So for the viewers, you see, again, we come back to the same question. Give proof without anything. I'm not talking about you know, proof. You know, it will not be I'm believed. I'm talking about changes okay. that you right. have seen all right. on your customers. All right, all right, all right. You lured me into this trap, I'll go into it. Okay. I have seen all kinds of changes. Right now, at present, with my uh, arsenal of, of, of stuff, of things, of, of potions, of remedies, of powders, of capsules, etc., I practically can heal anything. But... It is not a two-week process. It is not a one-day process. To heal a, a person who is, say, 30, 40 years old with some illness, it takes two, three years to get better, sure, a few weeks, a, a few months. But to heal, that means no disease. From disease present to no disease. 
Until then, it's, it's, it's at least a year or two or three or four to heal a cancer. It takes five years. And this is why it's a difficult thing. I healed many, many cancer patients. I healed all kinds of patients. I healed Down syndrome. Could you believe healing Down syndrome? And it did happen. It happened once. I'm not interested in Down syndrome. I'm not working with Down syndrome. But even that can be done. And what, what that entails? That entails the chromosomal changes, the chromosome reverting back to its normal state. And then the symptoms of, of the Down syndrome vanish. So anything can be healed. This is hilarious. This, This is, is hilarious. You know what? Nobody would believe it. But I, I will tell you, it's, uh, there, there is a schluss point here. Uh, the little girl who I healed with Down syndrome, she was discharged from the hospital after her birth. And I knew the guy who was the father, and he called me and he said, well, this is the unfortunate thing. Uh, we have a daughter, we are very happy with the daughter, but unfortunately the daughter has Down syndrome, and quite a bad one. They have discharged her, she's at home, and my wife is at home as well, taking care of her, and she's crying a lot because uh, she would have liked to have a, a, a healthy baby. Okay, I said, okay, let me go see the girl. And then in, in those periods of my life, I was working with instant healing. Instant healing is a, a very specialized thing. Mm. And it goes with, with uh, uh, making very swift changes, very f swift reorganizing changes in the organic, in the energetic, organic, okay, in the energetic balance and structure of a body. And It sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. When it works, you always get a, a, a light reaction, like a light explosion, mm -hmm. which others can see as well, and, 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 it's, and it's gone. And then the instant healing takes place. Now, I go to this girl to have a look at the girl. I don't want specifically to do anything, but in those uh, months I was, I was practicing that and with dogs, with cats, with patients, and there were lots of, of successes and lots of no effects. The little girl, that big, the cot, just ate. She's sleeping. I look at her, look at her, look at her, and bam, there is this explosion. White light, but blind, blinding white light. Nobody in the room. I was lucky. But they run in because they, they see it, because it, it explodes. They come in. They say, oh, what's that? I don't know. I'm good at denying. I don't know. <laughs> you, you have to do something a lot, then you get good at it. Now, and that's it. We have some schnapps, and we have some more schnapps, and everybody is very happy. I don't say a word. I don't, I, I, I don't do anything. And the girl is growing. And there is no Down syndrome. Are there people for whom it's not appropriate where you would advise against the treatment? No. So you would say it's for... It's for anybody and anybody. everybody. It's for the infant and it's for the dying. Old, 100 for, year old. For young people, anybody. old people, there anybody. is no Pregnant limit for people, the age. Allergic or... people. No, 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 no. No, because I don't give anything. Because... If a person comes to me, give me red lion. I say, I don't give you red lion. Why would I give you red lion? Because I want it. No, it doesn't work like that, buddy. It doesn't work like that. You come, you come again, you come again, you come again. Some, some patience, some humbleness, some friendship, some maybe, maybe some help from you. <laughs> offered or something like that, just coming up because I have it. Most people think that I'm, I'm, I'm just giving it out or selling it for horrendous money. And neither is true. So that, that doesn't work that way. If a person comes to me and he says, I need help and please help me, I always go out of my way to help him. But also you have a website where you can order. Yes, you have a yeah, website yeah. where you can order these, these uh, minerals. Yeah. But they are the minerals. You can't order the red lion because the red lion, the proper red lion, is, is not accessible like that. If, if there is, for example, red lion is... Now, just imagine, there is an evil person. There are evil people amongst us. Few, but there are. And there are powerful evil people. What is the definition of evil? 
the definition of it because you're looking at me like either you're interested or something you don't uh, uh, don't get. Evil is the person who finds joy in causing pain and loss to other people. Mm -hmm. So we always every day in our everyday lives sometimes cause pain and loss to other people. But I feel lousy when I do that. I feel very bad, horrible. Now the evil guys, they feel happy when they can harm others. Yeah. That is the evil. So there are evil people amongst us. And the evil people amongst us, where was I? You see, I lose my train of thought. Where was I? The, the evil people. Yeah, 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 I got it. The evil people. There are evil people. And you don't know uh, when, when a guy is evil. You have to get to know yeah. him because they are very good at, at uh, covering themselves up, camouflage. They are very mm. good at that. And then you give him, for example, the red lion because he asked. Yeah, mm. sure, I'm giving it out, doling it out like, like the uh, candy bars. And he takes the red lion and he becomes a monster. And that is my responsibility. So this is why through the ages, all the sages, all the alchemists who had the red lion, they, they, they were shouting on the top of their voices, never give it out, only to those who earned it. Because it can do, it can do various things. It can make the powerful very powerful. Now if a evil guy becomes very powerful, yes. yeah. then you get the Stalins and the, and the others. And you don't want that. I mean, I don't want to be part of that. And th <laughs> these are the things you learn through your own little mm. experience. If you go through. Yeah. So since you are not two or three hundred years old yet, how old do you believe you can become with it? Well, the first stop, you see, there is a bus route. There is a first stop, second stop, third first stop, which I, I designated as 500 years. So the first uh -huh. 500 years is the first stop, and then from there I'll, I'll, I'll think then. But now, now I'm thinking about 500. Is it your goal to live forever? And well, at least, that's the first stop. And then? Now, last night. You, you really want to live 500 years? Sure. If I don't live for 500 years in this body, what yeah. happens at death? Then I die out from this body. That means me, the soul, the spirit, leaves the body when the body is dead because this, it's of no use. Then I forget everything. Now, yeah. I spent my life, now I spent 80, uh, 58 years of my life learning like, like crazy. Mm. And then... I die and I lose everything that I have worked for because the memory is wide blank. And I am born again in the, in the in a infant body. Maybe my mother will be stupid. Maybe my father will be drinking. May, definitely my teachers at school will be stupid and, and arrogant. I don't want to go through learning how to write, read, etc., etc., and acquire all the knowledge which is needed in order to, to, to get to adulthood when I can go through in the same body without the loss of memory. And just imagine if you take that 500 years, which is my first bus stop, a normal mortal will be reincarnated six, seven times in that period. Six, seven times he will lose everything he learned. Six, seven times he will lose all his possessions. Six, seven times he will lose all, all the mastery he had. That's stupid. But tell me, for people who believe in karma and reincarnation, um, can they, the delay of death, can this unbalanced process? Well, this process, well, okay, first, the process Or of living for effect? a very long time is From an process? unbalancing process, yes. And you think dying and withering uh, in the process of dying is not an unbalancing process. Just because everybody is dying, we take it as normal. Oh, that's normal, but that's not unbalancing. Those people are clinging with all their might into someone, into anyone, into any help they can get. It is so unbalancing. 
to decide that, okay, I'm going to live 500 years is much less unbalancing. It's much more comfortable. It's much more harmonious. It's much more happy. And it's much more delightful. Death is not delightful. Living for a long time is much better. So no, I don't think the answer to your question is no. So you don't think that um, you have to come back to learn something new? Why have to come back when I don't go or away? Or to clear up your karma from the life before? The, uh, you see. Because uh, if you make something wrong yeah, in yeah. this life. There is no such and you, thing. And you live like for the next five, six, seven hundred years. So you don't have the chance to clear up. You can't clear up. Karma is a thing that you can never clear up. For example, every life you die. That's a mistake. Mm. That's a sin. Why? Because you didn't do everything not to die. That is in the name of karma. Is that good or bad? So we come to the question, what is good or what, and what is bad? We term that good, we term that bad without inspecting the two things. I think dying is just as sinful as thinking about not dying and working for not dying. Just as sinful or even worse because it's going down <laughs> into oblivion. <laughs> and and I, I, I think it's much more laudable, it's much more uh, 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 um, respected to be respected thing. It's, it's, it's much more respectable to work for longevity than to, than to accept death and sickness and, and loss of memory. And ah, now I am old, now I can't sit on my horse. I don't ride the bicycle anymore. And I don't read because my eyesight has gone bonkers. So this is a wrong program. This is a wrong program, which we call normal in our society. And everybody is, 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 is clapping their hands. Oh, how nice. Uh, it's so normal. <laughs> well, that's so normal is a miserable existence, in my point of view. <laughs> so there's a possibility that mankind is able to get very old <coughs> naturally. This is what you say. Eventually. Yeah. Then... Even Why do we need an Alex here? What do you think prevents because, this from happening? Because when mankind gets to that, it will be available only for the very rich, only for the very powerful. You don't want to think that, okay, this breakthrough will be done. Mm, looking at science today, in 20 years it will be commonplace to have the genetic engineering procedures in place to make you live forever. Mm. In 20 years it will be done. But it, will, it, it won't be available to thee and me. We are nobodies. <laughs> the big guys up there, oh yes, they will. Now they don't have that yet, but the big guys already have cloned bodies. Sure. They, every big guy has a cloned body. But do you have a cloned body? No, you're not eligible for that. Now when it will be available for them to live forever or live for, let's say, hundreds of years, mm. it will not be available for us. So you and me, what we can do, and all those who listen to this interview, uh, they can, we can make the effort to reach it ourselves. And it can be done. It's a lot of work, but it can be done. And I did the work. Now I can tell you how easily it can be done. Because you don't have to go through all the mistakes which I have done. So, yes, in 20 years of time, normal talk in media will be about we can live forever. That is science. But it will never be made available for a very, very, very long time to the common people. And I'm afraid we are common people. Okay, tell me... If I'm 500 years old, how does it look like my, my body looks, look like? Like at 22. Or how is my mind and my like, consciousness? Like you were at like, 22. So if I start now with the Alex here, yeah. you, you are saying I'm going not tomorrow and not in two years, maybe in I don't know how many years, I go back with my body? Yes, of course. First, you heal up. I'm getting That younger. takes two, three, four, five years. Heal up. Mm. 
you, you think you are not sick or you uh, know you are not sick. That's not true. You are sick. You have all kinds of things. Everybody has. This okay. is, I don't need a diagnosis yeah. for that because it's a given. Mm. Two, three, four, five years, you heal up. If you do this for two, three, four, five years, I mean, if you listen to me for two, three, four, five years, you will not ask those questions again. Because it's a matter of, of awakening to new possibilities, which mm. you did not know about before. So a sick person comes to me, or let's talk about you. Yes, two, three, four, five years, you heal up. Then in five years from now, you will see that you're, you didn't get a day older and your appearance and your body didn't deteriorate five years. It stops deteriorating here, but five years later, when your friends and when your family and when your circle of people, they are five years older than you, yeah. and then they will say, oh shit, Vesna's got some, some trick up her sleeve, let's hate Vesna for that. And they will hate you. <laughs> now then, you, I send them then to you. you call me, because you see, we are then five years in communication. They, mm -hmm. This whole thing is about communication. I know something because I put a lot of work in it, into it. And let's communicate about it, because then you don't have to put all that work into it. Mm -hmm. You can get the ripe fruits put on your platter, and you can eat the ripe roots. For five years, you are in communication with me about these things. In five years' time, you will see that your, <coughs> your, your immediate vicinity uh, did not change a bit to the better, but changed a lot to the worse. They aged, and they got sicker, and they got whatever. In five years' time, you already know more or less what I am talking about, but you have not done it yet. But you have a different reality about what I am talking here. So, mm -hmm. yes, the claim is that, that anybody who joins our little circle here of communicating interesting people, because that's what we are, we are nothing special, we are people who are communicating about a subject which is interesting to many people, to most at the beginning, because they want to heal because they are sick, or they are very unhappy, or they are poor, or they don't understand life as such, and the whole thing is miserable, and they want out of this misery. So they say, okay, we look at this interview, fine, fine, fine. Oh, that guy is talking quite a bit, but I'm here to talk. And then they join. Then in a few months' <coughs> time, they, they have to take the minerals, because the minerals are to rebuild the body that I can't help. In a few months' time, they are getting the, the resonance and the, and the whole thing which is uh, with the red line. They are starting to make uh, changes in their consciousness and starting to understand things. With the understanding comes the, the behavioral changes, comes the, the mood swing changes, come all, all kinds of things to the better. In, in, in a year or two years' time, they say, oh, this is nice. Most of them, 90% of those who joined, when they feel better, they will go. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want any more, they wanted to feel better. About 10%, 15%, 20%, I don't know, will stay because they're curious what, what there is. They stay for five years. And now that is what you asked. Five years later, yes, five years later you are healed and you look much better than you look now, five years from now. And then you are hated by lots of people around you who were your friends before. <coughs> then you stay because you're still curious. And, and there is a lot of talking, and we, we got to like each other. You stay for another five years. Then you're in the circle. No, the other <laughs> five years will be enough to make you... Uh, oh, I only got the French word. Uh, only make you anti-hygienically younger than the others. So you will not be hated, you will be, you will be, you will be, if they could, they would burn you at a stake. <laughs> so then, in, in, in 10 years' time, you have to leave the community you are living in. Because you chose another community where people live for long. They don't live for long. So that is about the, the time factor, 10 years of immersing yourself in this, uh, these data in the process. And already at a stage where you can, do not fit in your prior environment. And then you change your environment. 
because then you are a different person and you don't give a thought about not changing your environment. You move somewhere, you take a different work, or you join different whatever, and, and, and you go to people who are like you. Birds of a feather flock together, that's what they say. So this is not an easy thing here. It is not a fluffy and, and fashionable thing. Okay, I will start doing this thing and then I will get younger and everybody will cheer me. No, 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 mm. no. But if you're sick, if you want a better life, if you want more understanding, if you want more money, if you want more comfort in your life, it is the best investment you can do because it costs almost nothing. It costs you and your interest being nourished in this whole thing because you are doing a service to yourself. It's much more less than a smoker spent a month no. for cigarettes. Yes, yes, so, yes, yes. But can you tell our viewers um, what exact, exactly does the elixir trigger in us? Why can it stop the process sure. of aging? Sure, I can it, tell it you. It has something to do with the telomeres or? I can tell you. I don't know. What's happened in the body? I don't know. I only know that it happens. Mm -hmm. The telomeres, yes, the telomeres, lots of talk about the telomeres. You think that those who talk a lot about the telomeres, they know. You think the good doctor, your family doctor, when you have some problem, he knows what the problem is. Ah. We talk about it, but the bottom line is, Maybe there are 5, 10, 15, 20 people on the planet who know really about telomeres. And they have signed all kinds of non-disclosure agreements and with the penalty of sudden and instant death. Because that is the telomere thing, is the thing of longevity. So believe me, it's guarded scientifically. But we know other ways how to do it, and there were people of old who didn't know anything about telomeres, and they did it, and they remained young, and there is evidence of that. There is evidence of what they did and how they did, and if we replicate that, not having access to telomere treatment in a fine laboratory with white coats, and it happens as well, then who cares about the terminology here? And that I am sure of, it happens. But of course, it is not done in, in, in a Swiss private clinic <laughs> with, I don't know, what kind of fancy equipment. Um, tell me, if you can create life on the one hand, so you have to take something away on the other. No, you don't. Is there any truth to this philosophy in connection to your tincture? Well, if you create longevity with the tincture, and you damn sure create longevity with the tincture, then it's evident that you have taken away the short life concept. Yes, you all, when you take one, you have to give up the opposite. There is no other way. So this wasn't a very clever question. Of course. And it's not you asking the wrong question. I'm talking here on purpose to the viewers that, yes, whenever you take something, the opposite has to be given up. If you get married, you're not a single girl anymore, for Christ's sakes. Please recognize, please see that, yes, you have to give up. And it's, there, it's the same with everything. And yes, if you have a very good medicine and you take the very good medicine, you then don't take the other medicine. So you already have given up the other medicine. If you change your doctor, then you don't go to Dr. Black, you go to Dr. Brown. Oh, you change your doctor. This is how it works. Yeah. What ingredients is it made of? What ingredients is it made of? It can be made of, it can be made in various ways. There is a a, a source of the uh, stone from plant. For that, you need a, a wild grape, uh, a, a, the, the roots of a wild grape, which is grown in the Himalayas. It is called a soma plant. 
and very difficult to access, actually quite impossible to access, but that is the easiest way to make it. You can make it from gold, mm. and you can make it from other living things which we don't do. Mm. In other words, you can take away a life, and this is what, what uh, uh, very questionable uh, secret societies were doing and, and all kinds of sects. So to, to kill infants and take away their life energy to ingest and then they lived longer. But that, that is out of the question because it is uh, atrocious. On your search, you came across to a hermit in the USA who claimed to be around 300 years old. Please describe how you found him and how it came about that he passed the recipe for the tincture over to you. Well, this is quite mysterious and it is, it is in, in rapport with the saying that you don't find the red lion, the red lion finds you. And most probably this is what happened, or I can choke it up to that. But I did not know at that time anybody who could produce the, the red lion tincture or the stone. Same thing, but one is in liquid form, one is in powder form. And I have a friend who I talk with. He's a great uh, uh, telephoning guy. He can call everybody and he can find everybody. This is his forte. Otherwise, he's a hairdresser and lives in Ontario. Never met him in person. I only talked to him on the phone. And I had a sudden idea because I wanted to... to, to get access to, to Red Lion. And I told this, my friend Enzo, find me somebody who has the Red Lion. I said, okay, he'll try. Now, he succeeded finding because he can call many people, and he did call many people. And somehow, he got to the, the hermit. And this is how I had the communications with the hermit. And, and then Enzo even bartered and bartered talked so long that the hermit even uh, gave us the recipe, although we had to pay for it. I mean, I had to pay for it, but still I got the recipe of making it and I got product to try at the beginning. And then I got uh, quite a few uh, shipments of, of products, which I started giving to my, my patients. And that is how it happened. Tamás, please tell me which products are you selling and what ingredients are inside? Right. Okay. The main product, which is on for years now, five, six years, I'm giving to all my patients and, and I'm giving to everybody, is the, the uh, mineral salts, the cell salts, of the body. There are 12 mineral salts commonly known in, in, in everyday life as the schuster salts. And they are prepared in a very special way, the original way Dr. Schuster and Dr. Littlefield prepared it. And these are, these are 12 mineral salts. Anybody can look it up. Sodium, magnesium, silica, etc., etc. It's, it's a nice list. And that is then activated because to go into the shop and buy these salts, it's very nice. You can buy it. They are factory made because they are factory made and they are no good. So the, the old, old uh, uh, practitioners, the people of art, they always uh, produced the ashes of of. Uh, pigs for this thing. So what we do is we take a pig, about 50 kilograms, young, healthy, strong, strong, and we uh, kill the pig and cremate the pig. Done the same, the whole thing done respectfully, the pig would get killed anyway. So that is how it is. And when we cremated the pig, then we get ashes from about 50 kilogram 
uh, pig, we get about 600, 670, 680 grams of, of ashes. Now, these ashes are then treated for 18 months to revive it. And when that is done, then we add a pinch of the original red lion uh, uh, tincture of the hermit to it to produce a, a, a pronounced healing effect and to give a, a, a little hint of the red lion effect. But it's very little because with that we can do no harm, but we can do a lot of good. Mm -hmm. And that is the gray pill, which is known for, for, for quite a lot of months now by our customers. And this has to be taken, one pill a day, full stop. And if anybody is smart enough, then they try it and take it and take it and take it and take it and don't expect any big results in two months because it takes longer. The other product is a very special form of calcium, which is water soluble and it gets straight into the blood and straight into the bones and muscles and everywhere. The problem with all kinds of calcium uh, preparations which you can buy in, in uh, pharmacies and health shops is they, they're good for nothing. They don't get absorbed in the body. It comes out with the, with the feces or with the, with the whatever. And it's useless. So we prepared, we made a very, very good calcium preparation and it is, it is remarkable. So these are the two main products. And the calcium gets also added a pinch of Red Lion original tincture. Mm. With these two, you can do a hell of a lot of good, but you won't really have big consciousness changes. Con they understand, you see, since the whole point of, of teaching people, the whole point of treating people is to have a smarter guy at the end, smarter than at the beginning. That is the whole point. And this is why there have to be consciousness changes. Now, to a sick person, to an absolutely uh, uh, new to this field person, I cannot give pure red lion because it is not a thing to play with. And the only thing I can do to affect these consciousness changes to have a, a, a full uh, repertoire because there is nothing more you have to take. These two, the gray pill and the calcium. And then what we can do is I have red lion, very nice red lion, which would affect the consciousness change, but that I do in, give in a radion, radionic way. In this way, I don't spend all the red lion I have because it's quite difficult to make. I have some red lion which I use for this process. I have built a beautiful machine. You will see sometimes. The, this is something new what you this have is in a your new, product yeah. line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a new thing because I had to add it because it, it is evident as our, as our customer uh, uh, number of customers are growing and they are growing because, because they are having good results. Uh, sooner or later I will come to the end of my red lion supply. And this is why I had to uh, get something out. This is one thing. The second thing is I can't give red lion to a person maybe after three years of taking the, the two products, the pig salt and the, and the uh, calcium with the pinch of, of red lion in it. I, I can't give pure, pure lead Ryan only about three years after one started on the on the process and read the newsletters and there is contact and there is there is communication etc. And by then the person will not have adverse effects from the from the pure red lion. So I don't want to lose those two three years mm -hmm. because it is it is quite Spartan that way, quite stringent, quite strict. And let it ease. Let's uh, let's ease it a bit. I I created this new uh, addition to the to the whole thing, a machine, a big, huge radionic machine, with which I can transmit to the person the information contained in the red lion, the pure red lion. 
And for that, I need one strand of hair, but it's better to send me two or three strands of hair because through the handling and putting it on the machine, uh, it may get lost. What happens is there is a big machine. The big machine is actually a big uh, uh, radionic amplifier. It is like a radio station broadcasting. On this radio station broadcasting, we put the hair of the individual who sent us the hair, who wants to get better and, and is taking our uh, uh, minerals. We put it on the uh, uh, machine and his hair contains his DNA. Only his DNA because that is his hair. And there is a lot of other hairs on the head of his head or other hairs on the body hairs. So there is his antenna, his specific antenna, who will transmit, on, transmit only to him. S distance is not a problem. It doesn't mm. matter. The whole planet this can the be... Qu quantum physics. Yes, it's quantum it's physics. So there is no distance as such. So in this wise, with this new addition, I can actually start straight away the red lion treatment. Mm. But with no red lion effective red line given out. But it is perfect, it is working, it is beautiful, and then for those two, three years which have to go by, they don't go by empty two, three years, just healing and, and getting better and getting better, but it goes when the whole thing goes nice. And, and, and this is lovely because it is, it is smooth. Mm. The red line can produce miserable problems in the beginning. And with, with, with this, uh, it doesn't matter if the person is absolutely very sick. You can go on it and, and, and it, can, it can go. Tamas, thank you. I gave you today my uh, a, a little hair. Yes, you have. So I will report. And two weeks before I started with the products, so I can report, the, uh, report this too, also to the viewers. And with a bit of luck, we can repeat this interview in 200 years. <laughs> well, let's make it every 50 years, okay? Because every <laughs> 50 years you get two generations grown up, so one generation will miss out anyway. Every 50 years, let's do an interview. And in 500 years, we have a cake, okay? With Thank you interview. for everything. All right. Thank you, Tamas. Thank you.